So a few weeks ago, we released a new functionality called Croc Powered Webhooks. So we thought we could come here and talk a bit more about what they are and uh, what they actually bring to the table. Because uh, we've been having webhooks uh, at Sanity for a while now. Uh, but these Croc Powered Webhooks are really quite different. So I thought I would just start by talking. Oh, I need to be on the right screen. There we go. Yes, I'm not going to talk about webhooks initially. I'm going to talk about foosball. And I know it's a very typical startup thing, and I'm, I'm like a bit sorry for it. That is so typical startup culture to play foosball, but it's such a fun game. So we, we do it a lot at the office, or some people like to do it a lot at the office, and some people don't, and that's fine. Either way works. But since we're at Sanity, there is, of course, one golden rule. You can't play foosball without a studio. Like, we don't do anything without a studio. So obviously, we've created our own uh, foosball table matching system studio, which deals with all the concerns about playing foosball on a daily basis. We need to optimize our foosball table playing game, of course. So in this system, you create your own profile. You can upload your profile picture uh, or an avatar if you don't want your picture on screen. You can pick your name. You can also add four exclamation marks after your name, which Espen found really annoying when I did. I'm not sure what's wrong with four exclamation marks. It seems like it's just a reasonable amount of expl explanation marks. No, it should what? be one or three. Four is, yeah, I guess that's why four is perfect because it annoys Espen a bit. Um, but then when you want to play a game, you go in here and you select all the people that you that wants to play. And the great thing here is that uh, it can prioritize the people who haven't played a lot recently and it can balance the teams to make it a fun game. And you just click a button and it tells you who's going to play this game. And it's, uh, it's really making our life easier to play foosball, which is like a great thing at work. Every, all of the managers love it. And the way this is all handled is through Slack. So we have this Slack channel. So when someone wants to play, they uh, they write inch, which is Norwegian to take the initiative. And then if people want to join, they can say that as well. And this is the point where the webhooks comes into play. So what we want is, of course, that this beautiful studio, which handles all of this, this matchmaking, is able to tell Slack that the match has started and the game is in progress so that everyone can rush to the foosball table and actually start playing. And this is where we get this beautiful thing. And I, I think I understand that you, you may not relate to the foosball table matchmaking problem. Uh, so hopefully this will be a bit more relatable. Um, but we see like a very common pattern that people use with Santi is to have a serverless function to do various things. So in our old webhook system, uh, we did we managed to solve this problem with a serverless function. And it's a very powerful pattern where we can kind of like co connect sanity to the serverless function, and then you connect the serverless function to something else, and you can do, do tons of uh, interesting stuff. So in this case, Slack has a great uh, integration where you can set up an incoming webhook, and then you can just post data to that incoming webhook, and it will post it to the channel. Uh, super useful. And in Sanity, our old webhooks, we had like a very simple webhook system where you could like, yeah, I want to get the get the notification on something, and it will, and then that we could connect that webhook into the service function, and it can do all of its things. And seemingly, this seems like very perfectly fine, and like what well, this is, this is how you do things, right? This is the this this works. But and this is where the where it comes in. It turns out this is like more more annoying than you think, or more annoying that it should be, or we think that it's more annoying that it should be. Yeah. Right. So uh, yeah, absolutely. So the webhook system that we we made initially was sort of as you say, it's a notification system. It lets you know that something changed or some something was created, but it wasn't too helpful in a lot of cases. So uh, for one thing, it it triggered on everything. So whatever something changed, regardless of what it was, you would get a notification. Uh, and so you'd have to be doing a lot of filtration in in your uh, inside of your serverless or uh, function to to not react to those events that you're not 
uh, you don't want to uh, care about. And then on top of that, you didn't really have a lot of information in the payload that you got to your serverless function either. You got some document IDs and whether or not they were created or deleted or updated. And to make things worse, uh, when uh, the notification was triggered, that was done really quickly. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the, the data inside of the content flake is updated yet. Like if you query for it, uh, it might not be the latest copy. It's there in the database, but it's not searchable uh, necessarily. So sometimes you, you have to wait a little bit uh, to actually get that uh, data back if you want to do queries. And on top of that, there's no real, there wasn't any real security built into the system. So if someone took the URL for your webhook and uh, posted some uh, random data to that, you would have to do your own sort of authentication with uh, some query parameters or some, uh, some, some other mechanism. And on top of that, there's also the, just having a serverless uh, function can also be a bit of a pain sometimes. Uh, just having somewhere to host it, having a URL that may might not be easily recognizable and uh, potentially having that build uh, in a different way or aside from where you're hosting otherwise can, can sometimes happen too. So uh, we we take an example for this uh, autofoos system, our foosball table. In the next slide. Uh, yeah. Here's, uh, I'll go through this, but uh, piece by piece, but this is sort of a, a sketch of what the code could look like. So uh, if you go to the next one, you can take a look at the um, filtration part of it. So once you got a request in, you would take the IDs and you would see uh, for the IDs that were created, you could do something like slightly clever, like. We know that a when a match is created, there's only ever one document in that transaction. So that's one way of at least filtering out the events uh, where there were multiple things happening in the same thing. So let's not care about those events. But then uh, if we go further on, it's uh, still things like uh, having to wait for that um, that data to be consistent because in the next step here, we want to do a uh, a query. And so if we're now using that ID and saying, uh, I want to only fetch this if the, the document type is a match, then you might not get that document back because it might not be indexed uh, yet. Uh, so that's why we were waiting in the step above. And you're also uh, basically getting a lot of data in this uh, query that you theoretically just could have gotten when the, this was posted in the first place because you're up, you're creating a document and most of the data is already there. So uh, it's a bit annoying to have to then use an additional API query to fetch that data. Yeah, so if we move on to the next step, there's the actual delivery part of it, which isn't too complex. It's uh, basically taking the data that you fetched uh, and building up a payload and then sending that off to Slack. So this part isn't too uh, too, too bad. And then if we, uh, yeah. Sorry there for not following the slides. I was trying to read chat while you were talking and then oh, so there I, I realized I controlled the, the slide as well and I was <laughs> super stressed. It's like, oh no, I had like one job and I didn't do it. Um, so, if you look at the code that we just looked at, if you look at the code we just looked at, it's you will see that it does a lot of like filtering and it like it transforms JSON and it's like what it's actually doing is just like turning some sort of JSON data into another set of JSON data to pass it into Slack. And then of course you have to ask like how do we like inside Sensi, we have a tool for dealing with JSON data and structuring it, and that's called Croc which many of you have probably used. So Grok is the query language you use to get the data out of Sanity. And it's also super flexible in how you filter things and how you transform it. And we use it a lot of places inside Studio, for instance, to configure. And then sort of the obvious question is like, what happened if you could use Grok inside webhooks as well? So, uh, see, there we go. 
So then I'm going to go back into this uh, this uh, serverless uh, function uh, flow here, and I'm going to look at some of these parts and kind of describe kind of what happens if you put Grok inside the webhook. So the first thing I'm going to focus on is this step where you need to fetch the attributes of the created documents and need to verify that it's in the correct type. So with this new Grok powered webhooks, you now have a way on, on the webhook, you can add a filter. Uh, so in this case, we want a filter for the type, but the type should be a match. And you can also specify exactly what sorts of events it should trigger on. So this should only trigger on a create new document. And this filter you set specify on the webhook itself. And this ensures that like we won't even call your webhook or your serverless function uh, won't even be called if it is not a type of a match and it's not a created document. Like any other changes in your data set will not be sent to your serverless function. So you're not built by it and you don't need to care about that at all. And also in this case, very often the filter is just on a type most of the time you just want everything for a single type but it should also be stressed here that you have the full power of grok so you can do more complicated things you can combine with ands and ors and you can select multiple fields and here we can also do dereferencing so if there's some other interesting data in another reference document we can check whether that is true and all of that is is available by just by just adding grok into this functionality so then when you go in back into this flow, you can just remove that part from your serverless function. Like you don't, you don't need any of that code. You have made, made sure that your serverless function is only invoked when it needs to be called. And then we can go over to the next part, which is the part where you fetch all the related data. So the other feature of uh, these Grok powered webhooks is that you can have a Grok ex expression under the projection. So you can not only configure when it should be ex executed, uh, but also what the what your serverless function should receive. So in this case, we only care about the timestamp when it happens, we care about the venue, and we care about the team names. And, and yeah, as you can see in our system, we actually have support for multiple venues. So right now we only have one foosball table and it's at the Oslo office. It's actually right around the corner here. But we are, you know, we're thinking forward. So when we acquire a new foosball table, like our system is ready for registering it in the system. So that's why we also need the venue in this uh, in this projection. And here as well, you can kind of you can include anything. You can dereference. So in this case, you will see that the teams are actually stored as separate documents. So in order to get their name, you need to follow that reference and get the latest team name. And once you do that, you make sure that uh, your serverless function is actually receiving only the data it needs. And then you will see that the only thing that the serverless function is doing is formatting the message for Slack. And this is very Slack specific, but in, in Slack, they have this format that they, uh, if you want to send something on the webhook, it needs to be an object with a field called text. And actually, it turns out that you can just put that directly into the projection. Uh, so you don't really need to, you don't need to, like you can format it however you want. Like that's the power of Grok, that it's super flexible in the way it's formatted. And in this case, you, you see that maybe this is like indented a bit strangely. And that's because you need to use the new lines in order for the new lines in the Slack message to appear properly. And the stars here makes it, uh, makes it bold text. But uh, this is actually the exact projection we use um, in our webhook. And if you remember the screenshot uh, way back from the Slack channel, where you saw like Autofus said that the match started in Oslo and the red team and the blue team, this is what triggered all of that. So if you specify this as the projection, then uh, the webhook will execute all of this and all of this runs at our server. We, we deal with all of that and we just ship it off. And then you have this serverless function, which uh, is kind of not doing anything at all. It's like, it's just there and receiving some payload and then sending it to Slack. So then the next step just becomes to remove it. Like you don't need that serverless function. You can just connect Sanity directly to Slack and you can skip the serverless function. And that is just a super cool uh, use case. Of course, we reckon that we, for in many use cases, you can't actually fully get rid of your serverless functions because you need to do something more more complicated and that is fine 
because either way, we think these Grok powered webhooks will simplify your uh, your serverless functions quite a lot. Uh, but this this use case is especially cool to showcase because it's one of those, those cases where you can actually completely remove the serverless function. And that is uh, very cool to see that uh, with, with the flexible query language like, like Rock, you can, you can just drastically change how you build something. And while we're on the topic of this Grok powered webhooks, we sort of like added just a bunch of other features which aren't really related to Grok, just to make them a bit, bit better. So I just thought we'd, we'd mention it, uh, just because we think they're a bit shiny. So one thing that's new is that you can actually listen to changes to drafts. Uh, so you can tick a box and you can say like, I want my webhook to be to fire uh, even when the draft change. And just like be a bit careful because drafts change a lot. So you need to be aware that like your server will be spammed. Like every time someone presses one key, you will get a request. So if you can if you can handle it, then we'll handle it. But uh, be be careful, okay? Be be responsible. Uh, it's a it's a tricky feature. It's a bit dangerous. But um, but we trust you. I mean that's why that's why you you'll get it. Um, you can also like customize uh, the HTTP method and the headers, and this we hope is enough so that you you can like skip the serverless function and you can connect it directly to where you want to send it, and uh, hopefully that should be flexible enough. Uh, of course, sometimes you're not uh, you're not lucky. Sometimes they they want XML or some really strange things which we not can do, and then we can't help for now. But hopefully, this should make it easier. Um, and we also have some really cool features that which I haven't talked about at all, but inside Grok as well. Uh, for specifically the updates events, you can now do super cool things. So you can like you can write a filter which makes that like only fire the webhook if the skill has increased of the of the player, or only fire the webhook if some of these items titles has changed. So there's the, these are a bit more complicated, and they really allow you to have these fine-grained filters so that you only get what you care about. Yeah, and on top of that, we also have uh, security built in now. So you can set a shared secret for a webhook to enable it to send a signature. So that's included in uh, the HTTP headers that's delivered to your uh, the endpoint that you configure using the Sanity webhook signature header. And you can verify that using uh, a SHA-256 uh, hash. Uh, or if you're using Node.js, then we have a toolkit called uh, Sanity Webhook, which uh, has a few helper methods like is valid signature and a few middlewares for things like uh, Express, which makes it really, really easy to, to verify that these things are coming from Sanity and that they're using the, the signature that or the secrets that you configured on your end as well. So with all of these uh, these features, uh, I think we have a pretty solid, uh, robust use case uh, that's not just uh, applicable to Crucible, um, but uh, you can use it for triggering rebuilds of static sites, obviously. Uh, Gatsby and Next are both good examples of this. And you can invalidate uh, custom caches if you have that uh, somewhere and need to identify which documents to invalidate based on. Uh, you can sync to external services like Algolia or other services that you might want to uh, synchronize with. And of course, then the Slack notification doesn't have to be Slack. It can be emails or Telegram or Microsoft Teams or even like send uh, messages to people's phones, I guess. Uh, and you can analyze content and annotate content to when something changes. Like maybe you want to trigger when something is published and, and analyze that text and maybe create some side channel, some uh, annotated metadata that is uh, built into that. Or you can even use that as moderation. So for our community studio, for instance, we could set up a workflow where if someone adds a new contribution to, um, to the to the community, we can create a new document based on that that says that this now needs to be approved, or at least it needs to be looked at as a moderation step. So there's a lot of really cool things uh, that you can do with this. Um, we hope to see some pretty cool uh, hooks uh, being uh, reported in the community as well. 
And you can even create shareable links if you have something that's reusable. So if you go and create one of these in our management interface, you can, you can sort of get a, a URL that you can share with other people that uh, if you have something that's reusable, that's, that's really cool. And, yep. Yeah. And uh, so this was what we had prepared. And so uh, if you want to read more about this, uh, you can find it at the documentation. I think the link was shared in chat as well. And then uh, we have some time for Q&A. I've been trying to look at the chat while we were talking a bit, but it's always a risky business. Yeah, there were some questions that were thrown in the chat, but then you would answer them and then the question would be deleted. <laughs> so nice. uh, great to just, you know, know what what questions were going to be asked. Uh, thank you for that demo. Um, I think the number one question that is on everyone's mind is who is in first place in the tournament? I haven't checked recently, <laughs> actually. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It, we also have like two different uh, two different rating systems. We have skill, which is like the more correct one, which is like okay. use, very similar to how uh, chess rating works, which tries to figure out like the best one. And then we mm -hmm. have fame, which is very volatile, which changes all the time, which is a bit more fun. So it depends. It. Like uh, you, some some are better at fame and some are better at skill. But I actually haven't. Uh, to be honest, it's like yeah, we don't. I don't look so much about the ratings themselves because it's more <laughs> fun to play. And, yeah. uh, and the sad things about rating is that typically what happens is that after you play for three months, you are stuck at the same rating because you don't really, like none of us practice that much. So you don't I really see. get that much better. So you're always kind of stuck at your own level. So if you actually start to think about your own progress, you're just like, this is me, <laughs> which isn't actually too exciting, unfortunately. Nice. Well, I loved the demo foosball table tournament. It was very <laughs> exciting. Um, Ryan asked in the chat, is a hook query an API request? No, this bypasses all of the API requests. So, uh, but you are, I mean, every hook is triggered by a mutation. So you can't, like, you can't modify, you can't cause it without doing a mutation. So it's of course sort of like baked into the cost of the mutation. Got it. Um, and then how long has Grok powered webhooks been on Sandy's mind? This has been mm -hmm. months in the making. Like how long have <laughs> yeah. we been doing this? I think, yeah, it's, it's I, might think sense yeah, I think we found a Slack mention that it would be great to have filters for webhooks that was about two and a half years old. <laughs> oh. So yeah. So yeah, it's been something that we've wanted for quite a while. But uh, we finally got around to making it. It's been uh, there's been a lot of changes under the hood as well to make them more robust. Uh, that sh should be mentioned. It's not just the payload delivery uh, changes. So uh, it took a little while longer than uh, than we wanted, but it's finally there. Yeah, it's here and it's great. And I did a Slack webhook for a demo with Lauren. I mentioned that earlier, and we added in the. I didn't know it would work, but we added in the like the colon emoji thing to see if it would actually put up an emoji in the Slack message, and it did, and we were really nice. excited about it. Um, but yeah, it works, and it works great. Yeah, I also um, have a uh, I have an example that uses the the Slack blocks uh, thing mm. to actually embed images and stuff, uh, so I can, I can share that in the chat if someone is interested. Yeah. And um, Karen in the chat, how does it feel now that it's live? It, it feels great to finally <laughs> see it uh, see it being used. It's also like a bit strange when you ship these features because then like I'm already working on something else. And so I kind of like, after it's done, it's kind of like I forget about it. And then it's just like new stuff happening. Uh -huh. And uh, But then it's just super exciting to see that people are actually using it and uh, people are finding them useful. But uh, yeah, yeah, and there's so many, so many simplifications that be, can be done in so many applications now. So uh, that's great to also go back and just clean up code and uh, and uh, enable new use cases as well. Yeah, but it should also be mentioned like we've been having it internally for for several months before it was released. So in my head, like I like my some other smaller project, I already upgraded to the new one like way back, like 
So uh, I kind of got access to it before it was released. So to me, it's also uh, like the actual release date is uh, like I've known about this for so long. Mm -hmm. So uh, the release isn't so exciting then, unfortunately. How many, how many Grok powered webhooks do you have set up? For myself, I don't. Hmm. I've mainly been tweaking the one in Autofus, and then I have some uh, something I play with, but. Uh, I feel like maybe Espen is the one with uh, all of the studios around. Yeah, I have a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. It's, uh, it's got about 30 sanity projects and uh, a lot of webhooks. Nice. <clears throat> right on. Well, thank you so much for demoing, and thank you for letting us all see into the foosball tournament. Um, I'm actually not on that list because I haven't been to Oslo. So, um, I bought my plane ticket while you all were speaking. No, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> uh, it's very awesome demo. Uh, yeah. So thank you so much. And we've got the link for the docs in the chat. And Espen just posted that GitHub repo. So thank you so much, Magnus and Espen, for demoing that. And any final words? Don't think so. No. Oh. And enjoy. <laughs> yeah. Tell folks what I... you're building or what you're using them for. That would be great. Yeah. Yeah. Where can they where can they tell you? I made this on the community uh, Slack would be great. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, let us know in the, the hashtag I made this channel. We'd love to see it. Right on. Well thank you, Espen. Thank you, Magnus. Thank you, again. Thank you.